I would like to meet you to meet the Delphi. Delphi Micro. It is a very small flying robot. It actually flies through fra flapping its wings like this. It is the smallest flying uh, robot that flaps and carries a camera in the world. The wings themselves, it has two wings on each side, are built of uh, small pillars and foil between. It carries not only a camera here to make observations, also a small motor, battery, sender and receiver, and it only weighs three grams. It is only 10 centimeters from one side of the wing to the other side of the wing. It all started as a student project in 2005. My faculty, the Faculty of Aerospace Engineering bachelor students, the end of their bachelor in the third year, do a design synthesis project. And there, they have to come up with a design, satisfying specific design requirements in 10 weeks. 10 students in one room. And a former colleague of mine, David Lenting, asked them to come up with a design of an aircraft which can actually follow a red suitcase throughout an airport. And then they came up with a flapping aircraft, the Delphi 1, which you see here. This Delphi is um, uh, almost 30 centimeters from one side to the other side. It weighs about 30 grams, and it flaps six times per second. Already a remarkable uh, performance for 10 students in 10 weeks. They built it and won quite a few prizes internationally. And then we decided to really, really start a research team on this. And then Delphi 2 was born. Slightly smaller, 28 centimeters from one wingtip to the other. Slightly lighter also, 16 grams. Flapping a bit faster, 15 beats per second. And after that, we worked on and worked on with our research team. And then Delphi Micro, I just showed you, a few years ago was born. Very small, flapping even faster, 30 beats per second, 3-0. So this started as a student project. What we would like now to do is perform more research, try to understand how this works and see if we can actually make it even smaller. So our next goal is five centimeters from one tip, wingtip to the other wingtip, hopefully in a few years. What I would like to tell you today is some of the secrets behind the Delphi and actually the insects that also fly in the same way. Delphi's design was namely inspired by a dragonfly. So, so how do these things fly? And then I would like to show you a few spots of the research that we performed to better understand this complex flapping flight and to see if that can bring us further. So the first question you might have asked yourself, why flap? It's flapping nice nits. For that, my story starts with a conventional aircraft. Please pay attention. Maybe a bit slower. So as you know, a conventional aircraft goes really fast. And due to its speed, air flows over its wings very fast. And this airflow smoothly flows over the wings, stays attached to the wings, and that actually makes the aircraft able to fly. It provides the upward force needed for the aircraft to lift off. But for that, you need quite some speed, as you know. First, it's run driving over the runway. Only after it has reached a certain speed, the aircraft lifts off. The speed of the aircraft is way beyond the speed that you would need to follow a red suitcase through the airport. So that's not a concept that will work. Now let's look at the dragonfly. This is a dragonfly, flying. Actually, the secret behind the dragonfly, it doesn't fly fast, right? It can even fly very, very slowly. How does the dragonfly do this? It moves its wings. So while the animal itself stays re reasonably still, the wings flap. And by flapping the wings, air is flowing over its wings, and it can provide upward force. Same idea is used in the helicopter concept. You rotate the wings, and also helicopters can hover. Actually, the students thought about helicopters, but they uh, discovered that the stability, so getting really a stable flight of a helicopter is much harder 
than the stable flight of the dragonfly. It's harder to fly a helicopter than a dragonfly. So that's how they came up with the flapping. But how does it work? How does a dragonfly or the Dell fly stay in the air? For centuries, people have been puzzling about this. How an aircraft flies was reasonably known already for quite some time. But the same theory, the conventional theory you can use to explain why an aircraft flies, does not work for insects. Actually, using this theory, some scientists have proven bees cannot fl fly. Totally impossible. So after that, people have been speculating, what is it? There must be a secret mechanism that these insects use that makes them able to fly. What is it? There were some good theories, but only in 1996 there was the first clear picture of what was going on. And that was by Professor Ellington from the University of Cambridge. And he used a hawk moth for that. Here you see a picture of that. What he did, he glued a living hawk moth on a stick, put it into his wind tunnel, and in that way he created a situation as if this hawk moth was flying in free air. He put smoke into his wind tunnel, because otherwise you don't see the air. So what you see here are the smoke streaks of the air. Here's the hawk moth, here's the stick. Now, what we as aerospace engineers find especially fascinating, but I'd like to share that fascination with you, is this. Here, the flow on top of the wing is not following smoothly the wing, but makes a circle. You see it? There's a circle here, going up and then down. And actually, if you look closer, you see the flow rotates inside that circle. So instead of flowing smoothly over the wing, as it flow does for our conventional aircraft, here there's a circle with a vortex inside. And the flow rotates, and it's at the front of the wing. And that's, therefore, it's called the leading edge vortex. And inside this vortex, flow rotates fast. And this leading edge vortex is a secret mechanism behind insect flight. This is responsible for this additional upward lift. How does it do it? Well, inside the vortex, the flow rotates terribly fast, and therefore the pressure is very low on top of the wing there at the vortex. Pressure is high below, so it lifts off the animal. Here you see two pictures of the leading edge vortex on an actual wing. Here, a general wing on top, and below the leading edge vortex here at the front of the wing of a housefly. But of course, this fly is flapping, moving its wings. So the leading, this vortex is be built up, and then at some point leaves the wing and flows downstream, built up again. And we were wondering, what is actually happening? Does Dell fly have this leading edge vortex too? It was first built and designed, but not really studied in detail. And does it stay there or does it move? So for that, we performed an experiment. We put our Dell fly on a stick. So here you see the Dell fly on a stick in hover. And we performed an experiment. To, and we need to visualize the flow. How we do that? We put smoke in the room. So then you have particles you can see, illuminated it with a laser light, put cameras there and recorded what was happening. And then we used some complex math to figure out the flow pattern that was actually occurring when this Dell fly was flapping. Was the leading edge vortex there or not? We were really excited to share with you it was. Ooh, here you see in the previous picture, you see it. You can see it for yourself. The straight line is a cross-section of the wing at some instance in time. So there would be a cross-section throughout the wing like this. The leading edge, so the front of the wing is on top, and this is the bottom of the wing. The colors are a rotation in the flow, so red is lots of rotation. And you see here this red spot right in front, so it's there on the Dell flywing. Now, does it stay there was our next question, and what does it really depend on? It, does, it, does the form of the wing uh, influence it or not? So for that, we decided to do a much more fundamental experiment, you see here. We took a wing that was reasonably representative for the Dell fly and put it in a water tunnel. And we really wanted to in see if we can uh, change shape and flexibility of the wing. And we did that by having a thin wing and a, more, a thicker wing, which was much more rigid. We flapped it through the water and again did the same trick, illuminating it uh, with a beamer, like what is a, uh, a beamer using, used now to present my slides. 
and recorded it and looked at the flow around it. And what we found is that rigid wings don't work so well. And it's interesting, the students themselves tried out several wings when they were designing the Delphi, not performing measurements, but seeing how it flew. And they found out rigid wings don't work so well, but they didn't know why. Well, we performed our experiments with rigid wings and more flexible wings, and what we found is with a rigid wing, here you see the wing, the colors are rotation again, green is nothing's happening, so no rotation inside the flow. Red and blue is rotation, here's the top of the wing, so you need to focus on the blue spot. That's the vortex again, the leading edge vortex. With a rigid wing, it's not really there on top, it's already leaving the wing. But with a flexible wing, it's much closer. So apparently, by changing properties of the wing, we can change whether that thing is there and change the performance, the upward force. We're doing now more experiments to better understand this and doing also more simulations. Next question, so we now understand why it's flying, actually. But why does it have two wings on each side? You see that some insects have two wings, some have one wing. So what is this two wings really doing? The students found, they tried it out all, one wing, two wings, that two wings was giving the best performance, and actually the case where the two wings were extended the most, so for a very shape, uh, moving in a very large area, and actually even hitting each other. So. Uh, Clap and fling, also found in some animals in nature. What was this doing? Then we came back to our Dell fly again and measured the form of the wings. Do we have indeed a clap and fling? The wings um, touch each other almost. And this is what we found. Indeed, these you see here the two. Ooh, can we play it again? Yes, there we go. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, can we play the movie again? So this is a cross-section of the two wings. They clap together and, well, they fling apart. Don't really fling, almost peel. So it's very flexible. We were amazed to see how much it peels. And then we were in interested in what was this doing to the flow and to the performance of this thing, this clap and peel. For that, we performed computer simulations. And how do you do that? Well, you have your wing and you solve for equations to figure out what the flow does, velocities, pressures, and you do that in the area around the wing. For that, we divide the area, that's what you see here, around the wing, this is the cross-section of the wing, in boxes. And in these boxes, we solve physics equations, conservation of mass, momentum, and energy. And we approximate them, and if you have small boxes, you can accurately approximate them, larger boxes, a bit less accurate, but very difficult was here, we can do this on conventional aircraft, where the wing form stays the same, wing shape doesn't change. We create these boxes, solve the equations, done. We know what is happening inside the flow. But the Delphi actually moves and changes its shape of the wing all the time, as you saw for clap and peel. So a PhD student actually spent two of his years to figure out how we can move these blocks such that we can still accurately solve it. But he was successful, so we could look in our computer at what is this two wings doing? And compare it with one wing, we can easily take away one wing, and compare it with rigid wings and flexible wings. Here you see the result. This is a cross-section of one Delphi wing moving in the air. Green is again no rotation, red and blue are the rotational things inside the flow. And you clearly see here leading edge vortex building and leaving off. And this is a hover case, so it's flying very slowly almost staying at the same point. Now, crucial question was, do we need to have rigid wings, one wing, two wings, flexible wings? So the solution to that is in this slightly difficult graph, but I'll take you step by step through it, <laughs> because this is my really key result for the last year. <laughs> The horizontal axis is just time, so it is one motion. We start just before the clap, the wings clap, go out and go back again. So one sort of period of the motion of the wings. That's the horizontal axis. The vertical axis is upward force, so how much force is on it in the upward direction. Now, we compare four cases. This is the true case, the Delphi wing, flexible, two wings. That's the green one. 
Red one is the same wing, but supposedly if it only had one wing. So Delphi flexible one wing. Then we created in the computer a rigid Delphi wing, one wing and two wings with a clap and fling. One rigid wing is the black, sorry, one rigid wing is the blue, and two rigid wings is the black. Now the dotted line here is the average over time. So the higher the line, the better the performance because the more upward force it has. So the better it can fly actually. And you clearly see green, the Delphi design winning and outperforming the worst, which is a rigid one wing, but almost a factor of two, so twice the upward force. So the students did a very good job without even measuring or simulating anything. Of course, we believe we can do better, so that's why we do more measurements and simulations. Then it's interesting also in time what is happening on the, with this force. This is just before clap, so here the wings clap and then they peel together. And you see that the upward force is highest, especially on the flexible two dial fly wings, when it's peeling. So then it is, there is a strong leading edge vortex building up, flow moving into the wings that's really good for performance. So we are now doing more measurements and more simulations to see if we can further improve dial fly make it more s even smaller and see if we can better understand it. Well, I'm glad that I was able to share uh, this with you. Of course, this is not work of myself only. We have a large research team uh, working on it. Here you see the PhD students and professors working with me. And of course, I cannot leave you without showing you actually Delphi flying. <laughs> <laughs> So my position, Mustafa Persin, uh, is uh, going to show it to you. Thank you. Yes.